Welcome to this series of lessons on qualitative research methods. We are going to cover 12 themes and each of these themes will have subsections. So our first theme is what is scientific inquiry? But let us start with a more basic question. What is research? Research in simple terms is a systematic inquiry into a phenomenon. Now, that word systematic is what we call scientific in a technical term. Now, this inquiry could be an explanation, it could be exploration, it could be description. So, research is a scientific inquiry into a phenomenon. A phenomenon is an experience, a problem, something that we are not able to explain with the present theories that we have and therefore uh, research is needed. Uh, now more basic question of what is science. So if research is scientific inquiry, what is science then? Rather than uh, really defining science, let us talk about a few characteristics of science. I would highlight four characteristics. The first a characteristic of science is that it relies on empirical evidence. What is empirical evidence? It is an evidence uh, uh, proof that is based on sense data. Sense data refers to things that you can see, hear, touch, taste. So what is the advantage of uh, empirical uh, evidence as opposed to logical evidence? We can also argue that uh, with our uh, logical uh, argument that this could be true as philosophy does, as theology does. But what is the advantage of empirical evidence? That what I see, what I hear, what I touch, you can also see, touch and hear. And therefore, it becomes something that we can prove technically. That is the advantage of science. The second characteristic of science is that it is reliable. Now the words reliability and validity is something that you're going to hear often in research methods. Reliability is a confidence that a finding when repeated under the same circumstances will produce the same results. So let us say a researcher A claims that this is what he found in his research. Now let us say a researcher B, when she repeats the same methods under the same circumstances, she will produce the same results, which means the results are reliable. In this connection, let us just very quickly speak something about validity. While reliability is the confidence of repeating the findings, validity is a confidence that that finding corresponds to reality. That which corresponds to reality is truth. So a good research should be reliable and valid at the same time that it can be reproduced and it really corresponds to reality. And we'll talk about this more in detail in a further lesson. The third characteristic of uh, science is that it is cumulative. What does cumulative mean? Uh, in common language, we say accumulation. It accumulates knowledge. So there are two implications of science being cumulative. We don't reinvent the wheel in science. Uh, the famous scientist Newton said, if I have discovered something, it's because I stood on the shoulders of giants. What was he meaning? He was touching on the core of science that it is cumulative. It builds on itself. The second implication in research is that is why we carry out a literature review before we start or uh, launch on a research. Why? Literature review tells us what we know already and what we do not know so that we add new knowledge to the existing body of human knowledge. So science, then it becomes scientific because science is cumulative. The fourth characteristic is that 
Science not only describes things, like a poet could describe, a, a literary person can describe things in a very figurative way, but science not only describes, but it explains. Now, in terms of explanation, we use two technical terms, that it explores correlations or association between two variables, that is called a correlation, and it can explain cause and effect relationship. We need a little bit of distinction between make, to make a distinction between correlation and cause and effect relationship. Maybe we will do that in a later lesson. But what is cause and effect? Let us say, as long as we say malaria is based, uh, uh, malaria comes because of curse, then probably we are not putting the finger to the cause of malaria, and therefore we cannot control malaria. So if we can control, uh, we can tease out all the factors that could be surrounding a phenomenon, then we say this factor is the cause of this phenomenon or this problem, then we can solve the problem. And that's what science intends to do. So let us repeat. Science has these four characteristics. Science is based on empirical evidence. It is reliable and valid. It is cumulative and it tries to establish cause and effect relationships. Now, let us very quickly look at how science proceeds. The famous uh, philosopher of science in the 16th century, Francis Bacon, talked about four steps in science. I think right at the beginning, it is important to remember these four steps because when you write your research proposal, when you write your research report, these are the four steps that we are actually portraying. The first step is to describe the experience, to describe the phenomenon. Every scientific inquiry begins with an experience of a problem. Let us say Newton was that proverbial example of Newton sitting under the apple tree. He had an experience, an apple fell on his head. But he asked the question, why does this apple fall? Now, that's an experience. Now, the second thing that a scientist does in terms of developing the scientific inquiry is to find out if somebody has explained this phenomenon already, if this problem has been already solved. If so it has been solved, then there is no need for a research. And based on what we know already, the second step is to generate a hypothesis. So the first step is the experience, the second step is the hypothesis. Now, once we have generated the hypothesis based on what we already know, then we go to the third step of verifying the hypothesis, testing the hypothesis whether it is really true, whether we can provide empirical evidence to support the hypothesis. And we do that by experimentation, gathering data, and finally, if the hypothesis is supported, then it becomes an explanatory system. It becomes a theory. It becomes a model. So four steps. Experience, hypothesis, uh, verification, and statement of a theory. So in research, in the first chapter, we describe the phenomenon, what we call it a uh, problem statement. And then towards the end of the first chapter, we generate a hypothesis or state the research questions and propose hypothesis. In the second chapter, in terms of justifying our hypothesis, we do a literature review. And in the third chapter, we say, how are we going to verify this hypothesis? That is what we call the method chapter. The fourth chapter, we present the results. And in terms of uh, proposing evidence for support or rejection of this hypothesis. Now, if it is supported, then in the discussion, we propose a theory or evaluate the theory, and that is research.